Okay, welcome to part three. Hopefully if you're on this part, you've completed building a basic home and you're ready to move on to something a little more different. What I mean is we're going to be designing spheres and we're going to be giving them kind of like a theme. So let's break down what a sphere is first. It's pretty much just a circle. So to start off this project, I want you to type in S or C C I R C I R. Enter and that's going to be your circle tool. And I want you to draw a circle of diameter 7, let's say, or radius 7. Press enter. We created a circle and we're going to, you know, we want to turn this into a sphere. So we're going to break it down. Um, to revolve something, we only need half of the object that we're revolving. So we wouldn't need a complete circle, we'd only need half a circle. Now to be able to select that halfway point, since I don't think I can just type in line and draw in, or wait, maybe I can. So line, can I just click over here and draw? Oh man, you can. Okay, so I'm just going to do that instead. Draw in that line so I have that. And then we're going to remove half the object. To remove a portion of an object, we usually do that using the trim command. So I'm going to type in TRIM, press enter, and then what you have to do is you have to select everything that is involved in this trim command. So I'm going to click on this line, and I'm going to click on this line. All of this is involved in the process. I'm going to press enter, and then I have to press on what I want to remove. So I can remove this side over here. You know, I can remove this side over here. This one is actually doing the cutting, so I can't really move that one. But I can cut this. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to press escape a few times. And if you did it correctly, you should only have half a shape. So now let's take this half circle and revolve it. To revolve something, we have to use the revolve command. So that's just REV enter and we can select what we want to revolve so I'm going to select this object over here as well as this line over here I'm going to press enter and then what you have to do is specify the axes and you specify the axes of rotation by essentially drawing a line for that axis so if I was drawing this one out I would start it maybe at the bottom here and I click and hold and I would drag upward. So that looked a little bit sloppy, but I think the point will get across. So click and hold, drag upward, and then click once. And press enter. Yeah, so it was a little sloppy, so let me undo that. Let me try one more time. Revolve tool, enter. I'm going to select this and this. Press enter. And now I'm going to select my axis of rotation. I'm actually going to click at the middle point this time. So the midpoint, I'm going to drag upward. I'm going to click, and there we go. I can see that I did it correctly, because if I hover my mouse, I can see that it's trying to revolve. So right now it wants to know how many degrees I want to revolve it. Since we're making a complete sphere, we're going to say 360, enter. And if you did it correctly, and I head over to my shaded mode, you'll notice that we have a sphere in play. Now, if for whatever reason you want to make more spheres, all you have to do is use the copy command, so copy, enter, and you can click on the sphere, enter, and then you can kind of click and make multiple spheres with that copy command. So this is a quick way of quickly creating a bunch of the same object. Now, something you might have noticed is that these, even though they're spheres, they're not really that sharp. They're kind of flat in many places. So a lot of flat edges. And that's pretty much why, or that's how 3D objects are made. It's just really just a bunch of triangles that if you make them small enough, it will make a 3D object. So to try to help smooth that out, we're going to use a command called the face, the, the face trust command located over here and what this is going to do is it's going to help smooth out those spheres so I want you to click on this and then I want you to type in the number 10 and I want you to look at the spheres while this is happening so look at them then press enter 
and hopefully you saw that they went from a little ragged to much, much more round. And essentially what we're doing is we're activating more triangles to kind of round out that shape. So now we have a bunch of lovely spheres. So, cool, what can we do with a bunch of spheres? I don't know, maybe we can make like a billiard ball or something. So let's go ahead and try to do something like that. To, to modify these spheres, we're gonna head over, and I believe actually we're already here. We're gonna head over to the View tab, then to Palettes, and we're gonna activate our Material Browser. So I'm gonna click on that, give it a second to load up, and there we go, we have our Material Browser. In our, in our Material Browser, we can specify materials for different objects. So, first we want to make those different materials. To do that, go to the original material, and right-click on it, and go to Duplicate. And you're going to create a new material type. You can call it what you want. I'm going to call this one Chicken, because I'm going to be working with chickens. Um, but you can make it whatever you want. And based on how many different objects you have, you can specify, you know, if each of these was a different one, I can create eight different materials simply by right-clicking, duplicating, and thus creating a new material type. So, now let's specify exactly what we're doing with that material type. To do that, click on the one, this is chicken by the way, and I'm going to click on the little um, pencil icon over here. It's going to open up some information about that material, and right now there's nothing. It's just white. So these spheres are already white. I don't need them to be white more. <laughs> so we're going to put an image on them. So where it says image, you're going to click on the white space, and then you got to find a file. So luckily for me, I already have a picture file. I call it Nuggets Chicken. This is something I made in Inventor. So I'm going to double click on that and it's going to open up a picture of a chicken for me. So with that in place, you know, if I closed out of this and then I switched over to my realistic view, so I'm going to click over here where it says shaded and switch over to realistic. I can now click on a sphere, go over to my material, right click on it, and then say assign to selection. And if you did that correctly, you should have applied your material type to that sphere. So right click, assign to selection, and you'll notice that it's essentially decaling that material type onto the object. Pretty cool. Now the reason I ask you to switch to realistic mode is because in shaded mode, it doesn't look like anything happened. Um, it's not realistic. It's not like what wallpaper is on there. So that's why I went to realistic mode. Now typically you don't work in this mode because it is the most res resourceful or like resource consuming mode. So I'm just doing this because all I have is spheres and it's pretty easy to see what's going on. Now, I have a lot of chickens on this, but I just want one chicken. Just one chicken on this entire sphere. I don't want a pattern, I just want a single one. So to fix that up, what we're going to do is we're going to head back to our material type, back to the image, so I'm going to click on the image, and then I'm going to scroll down to where it says scale. Now right now my scale is set to 12, and if you modify this number, so if I made this like 60, and I made this one 60, Oh wait, um, maybe not the best type. Um, you'll notice that it's really, really big now. But if I made this one and this one, you'll notice that right now we have a ridiculous amount of chickens on this sphere. But let's go ahead and keep it as one by one because that's actually what we have to do. So I'm gonna keep it as a one by one and I'm gonna close out of this and then I'm going to just go to one of my spheres. I'm going to type in the material command. So to activate material, you're going to type in M-A-T, real, <laughs> material, or material map, here it is. This is the one you want. I'm going to click on material map. And then I'm going to specify 
what shape I'm working with. So I'm working with a sphere, so I'm going to go to spherical, and then I'm going to click on the object that's a sphere, like this one, and I'm going to press enter. And if you did it correctly, you should only have a single object on the sphere. No overlap whatsoever, you just have the single entire image wrapped on the sphere. So let me show that one last time. I'm going to type in material to get me to my material map. Click on that and then I'm going to select the sphere. Depending on what shape I'm using, I can select a different option and I can work with that shape in a much clearer way. Click on sphere, click on the object that's a sphere, and press enter. Boom. And there you go. So anyway, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to create three spheres and each and put a different material on each of them. So maybe a basketball and a soccer ball and, and the globe or something. But if you can't find those, I just want you to get some practice with this before you move on to the next tutorial. So that's going to conclude this video. Until then, or until the next one.